in our session today. We want to look at the cluster quorum in a failover cluster. In a previous session, we looked at network load balancing clusters, and we want to point out the difference between the network load balancing cluster and the failover cluster. In the network load balancing cluster, we had traffic or requests being distributed among the server rates. With the failover cluster, it's a little different. For the failover cluster, we do have a cluster of servers, but these servers share storage. So the application itself lives on the node in the cluster. If one cluster dies or doesn't work, then the other cluster or the other node in the cluster will take over the application's job. So whereas in the NLB, we have each server hosting the same content. If one server went down in the NLB, the other is available. With the failover cluster, we have one node that is active and the other nodes simply wait and watch for that node to go offline and then that node becomes active. If a node goes offline in the failover cluster, it's not losing any information because remember that the content for the failover cluster, the data, is stored in a separate shared storage. Each node in the failover cluster has what we call a vote. And these votes determine whether or not the cluster is operational. The votes have a quorum. The quorum for the cluster is determined by the number of voting elements that must be part of the active cluster membership for that cluster to either start properly or continue running. By default, like I said, every node in the cluster has a single quorum vote. In addition to that, we have what is called a quorum witness when it's configured. And that quorum witness has an additional single quorum vote. A quorum witness can be a designated disk resource or a file share resource. Each element can cast one vote to determine whether the cluster can run. Whether a cluster has quorum to function properly is determined by the majority of the voting elements in the active cluster membership. As the administrator, you can configure the quota or you can have what we call a dynamic quota. With the dynamic quota set, the administrator does not have to configure the quorum. The quorum will adjust according to the number of nodes that it has. For example, if two nodes go offline and you have dynamic quorum configured, then the quorum will be adjusted so that the cluster will not fail the cluster will continue to work. The cluster quorum configuration has a direct effect on the high availability of the cluster for a number of reasons. One, it helps ensure that the failover cluster can start properly or continue running when the active cluster membership changes. Even though the functioning of the cluster 
depends on the quorum vote. That's not the only thing that the functioning of the cluster depends on. The functioning also depends on network connectivity between cluster nodes. It also depends on the capacity of each node to host the clustered roles that get placed on that node. It also depends on the priority settings that are configured for the cluster roles. For example, a cluster that has five nodes can have quorum after two nodes fail. However, each remaining node would serve clients only if it had enough capacity to support the cluster roles that failed over to it. And if the role settings prioritized the most important workloads. Remember though, that in Server 2012, we have that dynamic core management facility. That where if you enable direct core management, the cluster dynamically manages the vote assignment to nodes based on the state of each node. Votes can be automatically removed from nodes that leave active cluster membership. And a vote is automatically assigned when the node later rejoins the cluster. By default, dynamic core management is enabled. So it may not be necessary for the administrator to configure the quorum unless that administrator chose to make some changes. We want to take a look at some of the options available for configuring the cluster quorum within Failover Manager. In the Failover Manager console, we're going to right click on the cluster. We're going to select more actions. Then we want to select configure cluster quorum settings. We're presented with the before you begin screen. Let's pause a moment to take a look at the description on the before you begin screen. The wizard is going to carry you through the steps of configuring the quorum for your failover cluster. When we talk about a cluster element, we are referring to each node in the cluster. And if you have configured a this witness or a file share witness, that is included because that will also have a vote. The configuration that you choose will affect the availability of the cluster, meaning that you must have a sufficient number of cluster elements for the cluster to be online, for the cluster to function. If the cluster loses the amount of elements it needs to have a quorum, then the cluster will stop running. And note that we had said before that the running of the cluster does not depend wholly and solely on the quorum settings. It also depends on the capacity of each node to support the clustered role. So if you are choosing a DHCP role or DNS role or whatever role you're running on your cluster, then the second node needs to have the ability to run that same application. Should Remember, you only want to run this wizard if you need to make changes to the quorum configuration for your particular application setting. Because when you are creating the cluster, the cluster software will automatically choose a quorum, which will be your default option. And that configuration, the default option, 
will provide the highest availability for your cluster. Let's go ahead and click on next to continue. And here we are presented with some of the options that we can choose. The very first option, which is the default option, is the one that we just talked about, where if you choose this option, that is the dynamic quorum configuration, the configuration will be chosen for you and it will give you the highest level of availability. The second option here, select the quorum witness. That allows you to add, change, or remove a witness resource. Also allows you to configure a file share or a disk witness. And the cluster will automatically assign a vote to each node and dynamically manage the node votes. The third option is the advanced quorum configuration. And you only want to select this option when you need to make a specific change because of the application that you're running. In this option, again, you can modify the quorum witness. You can add or remove votes, node votes, and can choose whether the cluster will dynamically manage node votes. Remember the first one, the first option at the top here, use the default quorum configuration. That is the one that will allow the cluster to be configured dynamically. That is the, the quorum for the cluster. Now, depending on the quorum configuration option that you choose and your specific settings, the cluster will be configured in one of the following quorum modes. The first mode is node majority with no witness. In this mode, only nodes have votes. So only the server that has the application has a vote. There is no quorum witness configured for this mode. The cluster quorum is the majority of voting nodes in the active cluster membership. Then we have the second mode, which is the node majority with witness, disk, or file share. In this mode, nodes have votes, but in addition to that, a quorum witness has a vote. The cluster quorum is the majority of voting nodes in the active cluster membership plus a witness vote. A quorum witness can be a designated disk witness or it can be a designated file share witness. Then we have the last option here. No majority disk witness only. For this one, no nodes have votes. Only a disk witness has a vote. The cluster quorum is determined by the state of the disk witness. The cluster has quorum if one node is available and communicating with a specific disk in the cluster storage. Generally, this mode is not recommended for your failover cluster and it should not be selected because it creates a single point of failure for the cluster. To recap, if we select dynamic quorum management, which was the first option in the quorum configuration and the default option, the cluster quorum majority is determined 
by the set of nodes that are active members of the cluster at any time. With dynamic core management, it is also possible for a cluster to run on the last surviving cluster node. And it does this by dynamically adjusting the quorum majority requirement. The cluster can sustain node shutdowns even to a single node. We are also able to configure the cluster quorum using PowerShell. And we're going to look at two examples here. The first example, set cluster quorum, cluster one node majority will change the quorum configuration on cluster one to a simple node majority configuration with no quorum witness. The second example, get cluster one, dynamic quorum equal one will enable dynamic quorum property of cluster one if it was previously disabled. In this session, we took a look at the quorum configuration for a failover cluster. This is the end of our session and I want to thank you for listening.